Hi, this is Amy Lewis with Pop-Up Tech Talks. I'm here with Chris. Chris, can you introduce yourself? Certainly. My name is Chris Mears, and I'm a Principal Solutions Architect with NetApp SolidFire. All right. Burning question I have to ask. How are you going to make databases great again? That's a great question, Amy. And let me tell you, what I'm going to do is huge. Absolutely huge. Actually, what we're doing with databases these days is, as we all know, DevOps is the, uh, is the hot topic. You know, how do we make, make things automated? How do we make them repeatable? How do we help uh, our developers do more with less? And you know, it, it, when it comes to databases and, and persistence, not everything can be stateless microservices. As much as we would love that, it's not going to work for the persistence layer. You're going to need to store your data somewhere. And today, we have all different types of databases. So the more automated we can make our database administration, the more we can reduce uh, operational excesses, uh, the better off we're going to be. And uh, there's a couple of ways in which we're going to do that. So uh, what we like to do now is instead of having these uh, kind of manual operations where you make database copies or you need to instantiate maybe a read slave or something like that, uh, you can do this by tapping into the automated uh, systems in the storage layer, the API, and actually leveraging the storage layer to perform uh, these, these what used to be very manual and lengthy tasks. And uh, re you know, this is like taking a database copy of a multi-terabyte system could take nine to 12 to 15 hours, uh, and we're gonna, using automation and uh, snapshot clone technology, we're gonna reduce that time to like less than 90 seconds. Yeah. What are you finding that people are doing with that extra time? Uh, they're doing all kinds of things. They're, they're checking their Twitter feeds more often. They're uh, getting involved with politics. Um, but no, actually, they're, they're kind of forward focusing their, uh, their, stuff, their resources on development, on innovation, uh, where it should be, and uh, not spending valuable ops time on basically mundane, menial tasks. And in all seriousness, I know you've been an expert in this field for a while. What are some of the trends you're seeing? I mean, is this a shocking thing for you to how quickly this is progressing? Is this what you've seen or what do you what do you see coming? What is in the future? So so my, my take on that is it's about time. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many nights I've been up babysitting processes, uh, downing Red Bull and coffee, praying for a successful database storage migration completion. Uh, the you know, and, and my colleagues and myself, this is stuff that you get used to. And there's, you know, we, we want a way out of it. We want to we want to be able to change the way people do operations. And what I'm seeing now is a, is a massive trend towards this. You'll see it with uh, NoSQL databases and, and developer-oriented databases to start with. Um, but even those have a lot of at, at scale, especially have a lot of uh, manual processes and a lot of uh, babysitting that needs to be be done, care and feeding, if you will. Um, so I'm seeing a trend towards automation. You can see it especially in uh, databases as service uh, trends um, in, you know, in environments like OpenStack. You've got Trove or the enterprise version Tesora. You've got all of these uh, great, great services now that, that help offload what used to be kind of the checklist tasks of the DBA. And in many ways, that's uh, both enabling the DevOps personnel to become DBAs, but also enabling the DBAs to become more like DevOps folks. So I was going to say, it sounds like as a job transforms that people will need to pick up some new skills in all seriousness. So what are some of the things that you would counsel or mentor somebody if they were a, a DBA to be thinking about as they progress their career and as, as we move into the next few years? That's a great question. And in fact, that's a transformation that I myself have taken in my career. Uh, about six years ago, I transitioned from being uh, more of an enterprise-oriented database guy, Sybase. Luckily, uh, I was involved with getting Linux into the enterprise early on. So what happened for me was that I, le I, I went back and leaned on those basic Linux administration skills. So if you're a Windows person or you're a Linux person, get into your operating system. Know your operating system because what you'll find is the commonalities between databases, uh, the, they're all over the place. The syntax might change, but the basic functions of how databases work, even between SQL and NoSQL, aren't that different. Um, but what, what we find ourselves in now as database professionals is the era of polyglot persistence. And that's a fancy way of saying you have a lot of different flavors of databases running in your environment. So the ability to specialize on just one becomes less and less. You know, you can always stay in the Oracle world or the SQL Server world and live there your whole career. Anyway. Um, or you could be a, a database expert and actually apply all of those skills to various different DBMSs. And uh, so focus on the operating system. Um, focus on the commonalities between databases and learn some scripting. Python, PowerShell, whatever you need. I feel like the meme for this is do you even polyglot, polyglot bro? I polyglot the row. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show. Absolutely, anytime.
and we'll see you next time on Pop-Up Tech Talks. <laughs>